Okay, it's the weekend. I have a two-day rest period before my schedule gets busy again. But for now, I have a little time to relax and finally do this video. I'm going to have to cover Slammiversary and Impact in the same vid here because I don't have that much free time. But honestly, I thought Slammiversary was pretty good. It probably the best pay-per-view they've had this year. I know that's not saying a whole lot, but I do mean it in a good way. I really enjoyed the tag team title match. I thought Storm and Shelley worked very well together. It told a good story with them having communication issues but still managing to pull out the win. Really fun match. The only problem I had was that they made the British Invasion look really weak, and that felt like an unwise decision considering how light they are on good tag teams right now. If anything, they should be building those guys back up, because Mexican America as the top heel tag team is just... It's just no. Okay, just... No. No. And that's not a knock on Sarita and Rosita. They're fine, but Hernandez and Anarchia can hit the bricks as far as I'm concerned. Matt Morgan versus Scott Steiner. Was this a match we'll be talking about a month from now? No. Was it probably better than it had any right to be? Yeah. Seriously, this was so much better than I expected. Yeah, my expectations were low, but still, it was good enough for what it was. I wasn't bored by it. And I was actually really impressed with the victory roll spot. I, I couldn't believe Steiner actually pulled that off. They didn't embarrass themselves here, and uh, Morgan got the clean win. Fine, thank you. I'll take it. Kaz versus Kendrick versus Abyss for the X Division title. This was a good match. I just hated how it was booked. Because they had Kaz and Kendrick teaming up against Abyss for the whole match, and even working together, they still couldn't beat him. And these are the top two guys in the X Division right now. This close to Destination X, you need to be putting these guys over, not burying them. But that's pretty much what happened here. Why would anyone want to order Destination X when the booking seems completely designed to discourage people from doing that? It's just idiotic. Crimson versus Samoa Joe. I've heard some people kind of bash this one. I think the problem was most people, myself included, were expecting something more fast-paced with a lot of big moves and high-impact spots and stuff. And instead, it was more of a traditional big man match. Plus, I didn't agree with the booking, which pretty much called for Joe to go for submission after submission after submission, which slowed the pace down considerably. It wasn't a bad match. It just wasn't the match that I wanted. Now, I enjoyed the first half of it, but in the second half, Joe gassed out, the pacing slowed down, they started to lose the crowd, and it kind of petered out somewhat. I did still like it regardless, and I would like to see a rematch at some point, maybe when Crimson is a little more seasoned and Joe has had a chance to work on his cardio. As it is, this wasn't what I was hoping for, but still, not a bad match. Mickey versus Angelina for the Knockouts title. Too much interference, and the finish was horribly botched. Aside from that, this wasn't bad. It looks like somebody backstage finally came to their senses because Angelina's gimmick was toned down and she wasn't wrestling like a zombie here, and that definitely helped the match and the crowd response. I didn't have a problem with the wrestling, I just hated that there was so much interference from Winter, because they definitely crossed that line where the interference ceases to be effective heel tactics and it just starts to get annoying because it makes the referee look like an idiot for not noticing it. Bully Ray versus AJ Styles, last man standing match. Bah. This was great. Match of the night, arguably a match of the year candidate, at least in this company. I would say that I have not seen a better match with a worse finish in at least several months. The match was as good as everyone has been saying it was, and if you haven't seen it, find it somewhere and watch it. But the finish was so asinine. You're telling me that AJ can get up after jumping off a stage, he can get up after diving off that huge stanchion pole, but then Bully Ray kicks him through a sheet of cardboard about a quarter of an inch thick, and that knocks him out cold? Seriously? And why didn't the count for AJ start over again after AJ got to his feet? I love the match, but man, fuck that stupid finish. Ken Anderson versus Sting for the world title. Normally, I think the world title match should always be the main event. In this case, that would have been a mistake, because ending the show with that match would have been a horrible note to go out on. This match was awful. It sucked before the overbooking, after the overbooking, and everything in between. And why the hell did Bischoff get involved? 
Didn't he say on Impact that he was going to stay out of this? Yeah, I know he's lying because he's a heel and blah, blah, blah. But this is one of the reasons why nobody buys TNA pay-per-views. Because they've been conditioned to think that this company just does not deliver what they advertise. If you say that a match is going to be free of interference in the way that TNA did, then it should be free of interference. If anyone ordered this pay-per-view to see a world title match that would not have Bischoff and or Hogan getting involved for a change, they're probably really pissed off right now. So that sucked. But at least they finally got the world title off of Sting. Now he can just get his match with Hogan out of the way without the threat of Hogan winning the world title, and thank Christ for that. They ended the show with Angle versus Jarrett, and under the circumstances, that was the right decision. As I said last week, this match had the most buildup and was the main selling point of this pay-per-view anyway, and this was a really solid way to end the show. It wasn't the best match these guys have had, but it was very good. There was no interference, it had a clean finish, Angle wins, finally putting this feud to rest, or so I thought, and all things considered, this was the best way to end the pay-per-view. And generally, I thought Slammiversary was good. The world title match sucked hard, but everything else gave me at least something of what I was looking for, so I enjoyed it. That brings us to Impact. And you know what? This was a pretty good show, too. Some good promos, some good matches, also some really stupid stuff. <coughs> Eric Young. But this was a big step up from last week. They had an X Division match to hype up one of the guys on the card for Destination X, and this was an improvement over what we saw at the pay-per-view in that one of the X guys actually got put over. There were a few awkward pauses where it seemed like the chemistry wasn't all there, but that's just nitpicking. This was a really good match, and the right man won. Great to see Austin Aries. I didn't expect him to show up. I thought he was burned out on wrestling. But if Aries is going to be on the Destination X card, then I've got one more reason to watch Destination X. And hopefully he'll be the guy who gets a contract. If that's what he's looking for right now, I don't know. But I'm crossing my fingers. Something else I liked was this Bound for Glory series they started. Apparently there's a bunch of guys in this who have a chance to win points by winning matches over the next couple of months. And whoever gets the most points gets to wrestle for the world title at Bound for Glory or something like that. And this could actually be a really cool idea if they do it right. It's an interesting way to hype Bound for Glory, and that's good. And I like how it's going to be totally determined by wins and losses, and not by committee, so they can't just bullshit their way through this like they did with that asinine ranking system they came up with last year. I think this is a pretty cool idea. The only problem is, if you look at the people entered in this thing, there's really only two or three guys who could conceivably win it, so there's not a whole lot of suspense. I mean, the others are probably just there to fill out the lineup. But it could be a good rub and a good way to elevate some of those guys, so I'm not going to complain. The first match in this thing was Samoa Joe versus Rob Van Dam. Yeah, let's not blow our wad with that one too soon or anything. <laughs> They really should have saved that one for a big show, but nevertheless, this was a really good match. Van Dam won, but Joe looked strong in defeat because the match had some good time, and he was actually getting the better of Van Dam for most of it. So Joe didn't lose anything here because it was a good competitive match. So far, so good. They had a knockouts tag team match with Sarita and Rosita versus Velvet Sky and Tessmacher, and this was alright. We've seen much worse knockout matches lately, especially when Velvet's involved. But usually what happens in Velvet's matches, at least recently, is that it's booked for her to carry the action, which normally makes her matches really bad, because she just can't do this. But here, it was much more back and forth. The heels, who are, let's face it, much better workers, got in more offense, and unsurprisingly, it made for a much better match. But then ODB showed up, and then Jackie Moore, of all people, showed up, and I have no idea why they brought her back. The knockout division is stale right now because it needs new talent, not old talent. Why have you been trying out so many girls from the indies if you were just going to bring back an irrelevant 47-year-old Jackie Moore? I mean, really, who cares? If you were going to bring back someone who was prominent in the division at one point, it might have made sense at least, but Jackie was basically enhancement talent. So I'm not happy about this. They're just going backwards again when they need to be going forward. Plus, this whole feud just seems designed to put over Velvet Sky, so ultimately it's just going to be a big waste of time. And I guess I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Sting Hogan backstage segment. Yes, I don't care to see either of these guys on my TV anymore. I think they both just need to go away, but this was a great segment. 
Terrific acting by both guys. Sting actually seemed really fired up for a change, which is often not the case with him, so it's nice to see that he actually cares about this. And I like how they're tweaking his character here. It seems like they're throwing a little bit of the Joker from the Dark Knight in there. And he's playing it well, and this is actually kind of interesting. So the segment was top-notch. I just don't like where it's going. It's obvious they're teasing a Hogan face turn, and I expect he'll return from the dark side before Bound for Glory, conveniently just in time to somehow avoid paying any consequences whatsoever for stealing the company, thus rendering the entire Immortal storyline completely fucking pointless. And that's horrible! This whole storyline of Hogan stealing the company needed to end with the TNA stars rising up and ultimately defeating him. You can't have him turn face before that happens. You have to give the fans a payoff after all this shit. What, is he gonna take the company from Bischoff and then give it back to Dixie out of the goodness of his heart? What the hell is that gonna do? That doesn't benefit anyone but Hogan, when the whole point of this storyline should have been to benefit everyone else. So hopefully they won't go that route. Then they had the whole angle with Ken Anderson and Gunner. Gunner thinks the only reason Anderson beat Sting is because Gunner softened him up on Impact. I don't see how that makes any sense, because Sting was completely fine after the match last week, but whatever. So they have a match, it was kind of dull, Anderson gets too cocky, and Gunner wins. I do not understand the booking of Anderson right now for the life of me. First he loses to Eric Young, then he wins the world title from Sting, and then he loses to Gunner? What the fuck? First of all, you're making your world champion look like absolute shit when you should be making him look strong. Second, you're really hot-shotting Gunner here, who has not really proven himself yet and has not shown that he deserves this spot. I am a little more receptive of the guy since they started giving him more of a character, and he seems to be starting to get over a little bit, but I haven't seen anything from him that tells me that he should be getting this big of a push this soon. Maybe at some point in the future, but I just think they're rushing this guy. If they wanted to elevate a young star with a win over Anderson, Bobby Roode would have been a much better choice for a spot like this. And the last thing I'll talk about is Angle and Jared. Again, not delivering what you advertise. You hyped up Slammiversary as being the last time these guys would face each other, and then they faced each other the next night! You do this all the time, and now people just don't believe you when you say stuff like that anymore. If you said Slammiversary was going to be the last match, that should have been the last match. At least wait a few months. Don't do it again on Impact four days later. Why should people order your pay-per-views to see the big payoff of a feud when you've conditioned them to think it won't be the real payoff? Anyway, this was a really strange segment. It was a parking lot brawl, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. It was different, I'll give them that much. But it was really strange in how it was filmed. It looked like amateur video footage, which seemed really cheap at first glance, but at the same time, I think that's what they wanted. I think they wanted a guttural, gritty, street-level type of feel to it, kind of like the Motor City Gen Me Empty Arena brawl from last year. Well, they accomplished that much, and it was shot well. It's just hard for me to critique this because I'm really not sure what they were going for here. I enjoyed it, so there's that. I mean, they really beat the shit out of each other. It was pretty brutal stuff. I just don't know why they had to do it at all. I mean, with the stipulation of Jarrett having to move to Mexico now, I wonder if this might play into the AAA invasion that they're doing for Triple Mania down there. I'm not sure how that would work, but I guess it would make sense. But anyway, not a bad Slammiversary, and all things considered, a pretty decent impact, too. So, I'm gonna end it there. This is starting to run really long, and I still have to edit it, and plus I want to free up some time so I can see Super 8 and Green Lantern this weekend. So, that's gonna be it for me, and I'll see you guys next week. Later.